Hey guys, I'm Fowler. Today we're going to take a look at how you can take just about any sound in the world and turn it into a unique and aggressive bass wub. Uh, make sure to stick around because at the end of the video I'm going to provide you with a link to grab all of the sounds we come up with uh, so you can play with them, experiment, and maybe use them in your own production. Also, make sure to subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and uh, hit that like button because you know that's, that's how YouTube works, baby! First of all, here's a quick example of the kind of sounds we're going to be making in this video. So I went over to my Discord server, link in the description, and asked my fans to send over some random sounds. Boy, they did not disappoint. Enemy spotted. <laughs> Thanks, author. <laughs> I just recorded for like an hour, came up with a couple really cool sounds, uh, and forgot to hit record on the sound card. So, this is what we got. Oh, that's a cool sound right there. OTT. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Crazy as shit. I love this shit. I could go on and on and on. Bitch, I'm a ghost. Anyway, I'm just going to start over again. We'll probably come up with two completely different sounds, um, but at the end of the video, I'll show you the sounds that I came up with from the first session and we'll kind of compare them. So here we are in FL Studio. I've got the first sound, which is the video we just watched. Okay. And then the second one, you're going to have to wait until later to find out which one that one is. First things first, I like to just maybe time stretch it. Let's just, uh, we'll turn stretch on and we will just stretch it way out. Um, now, obviously, this is going to put the pitch way down, but we can go into the clip properties here and select uh, speech, maybe. This one usually gives a pretty interesting result. And from here, I just kind of, I just tweak stuff. I just mess around experiment. I don't necessarily know what I'm going for at the start, but just in experimenting and stuff, I kind of let it tell me where I'm going. All right, let's 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 run with that. I'm going to assign it to a mixer channel. Let's just see what happens if we distort it. Ugh. Very loud, okay, let's turn that down. Let's maybe OTT it first. Even that right there is kind of cool. Woo, that's cool. That's fucking sick. Oh! I'm running with that. That's sick. That was like maybe like his vocal cords just starting to move, but I've stretched it out so that, you know, maybe like one millisecond of original audio time now equals about a full second. That's sick. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I go any further, I'm just going to record that into Edison. Hit record. Okay. Now we have this. So let's send it back to that same. That's sick. Okay, let's let's try putting it down an octave. I mean, this is cool. All right, let's work with it. Let's uh, let's duplicate it. Let's make unique. Okay, um, let's try sending it to a, the vocodex. It's a vocoder. And we're just going to vo vocode it by itself. Uh, turn off all this. So the order in which you put the effects is very important. It changes a lot. You know, like if you let's let's try putting a very short reverb before the OTT and the wave shaper and turn it just so it's just barely there. So we're getting now that reverb signal is also getting OTT'd and distorted. So that that uh, is really bringing up the width of the signal. If we turn it off, it's a little cleaner, but it's also not quite as wide. Let's record this again to Edison. 
There's different ways you can do this. Uh, I just find Edison is the easiest for me. So we're gonna put Edison at the bottom of the chain. And then we're just doing the same thing, okay? Now, now we can trim it, drag it down. Now we have this. And we can maybe send that back through the same effects chain. Whoa, that's dirty. All right, let's try layering. It's a little too, it's too distorted. Let's load up Melodyne. Now, if you don't know, uh, Melodyne is kind of the industry standard for pitch correction for singing. Why do I forget how the alphabet works? Okay. Um, so it's very useful and I use it all the time for uh, correcting pitch problems with uh, with vocalists. But you can also load anything you want into it and do all kinds of weird stuff. So let's try loading this in. Let's change it to melodic. Okay, it's, it's kind of unsurprisingly having a hard time detecting the pitch for most of it, but it does know that it's in G, like that first kind of note is G. Actually, let's do F sharp or G flat. Okay, so now we know what kind of key it's in. What I'm gonna do right now is render it into uh, the folder, 2021. What are we gonna call this one? This is gonna be scream, uh, this is gonna be drop scream, because it was drop hop, the user on my Discord that submitted this. Uh, we don't really know what tempo it's in. I might put 169-ish, just so that I know, and then also F sharp-ish. So that way, you know, six months down the line when I wanna use this file, I can go and look, oh, okay, it's around 169 beats per minute and it's around F sharp. Uh, so let's save that. All right, and now what we can try doing is, Let's record it back into Edison so that we get the Melodyne tweak. So we're gonna do that. Whew, that's hot. Now, this is the cool thing. It's kind of like an iterative process. You could now take this, do what we did with the original sound to get there in the first place and do it again to that sound. So just basically like breaking things and seeing what happens. Whoa, what was that? One sec, let's let's distort it and get that. Oh. I don't know about you, but I love this shit. I mean, I may be a bit of an an IDM freak. So maybe that's why I love it, but I love this stuff. Like we just took like one little sound that was one second long and, and now we can go and harvest all of this like. And sure, 90% of it's garbage, but like that 10%, if you can find it. Like that, that's. <laughs> you could like make a techno thing out of that. That's kind of a cool groove, right? And like somebody would maybe listen to that, maybe not this sound, but they'd be like, how can I, how did he make that in serum? How did he make that in phase plant? Like what, how do you recreate that? It's like, no, I, I started with a guy screaming and, and, and then went from there. This is how I make a lot of my sounds. I just spend... Ooh. Sorry, I'm like interrupting myself. I spend hours doing this stuff and having fun with it. And that's the biggest thing. If you're like, if you're not like smiling and giggling and having fun and enjoying what you're doing, then I'm not really sure what you're doing, you know? That's not to say that there isn't work involved and you're not, you know, don't, you shouldn't expect to always be having a ton of fun, but I think this sort of stuff should be fun because you can hear it come through in the music. Okay, so this is at a good spot. Let's, uh, let's maybe render this out as well. I don't know what the tempo is. I'm not gonna try to figure it out right now. We're gonna call this drop scream to, uh, 
I don't even know what key it is. Let's, whatever. Well, I'll figure that out when I want to use it. One last time, we're going to load it back in and see what, what else we can do with it. And maybe try some different effects. We have all of that uh, uh, rendered down to one file. Let's... Okay. Okay. I don't like that. Let's try sending this to Melodyne and see if it can like detect any pitch whatsoever. I kind of feel like it's not going to be able to... <laughs> okay, it thinks it's a polyphonic signal, which obviously is incorrect. Let's try to work with it. Let's see if we can figure anything out. Uh... <laughs> Jesus. Okay, sorry for the that. <laughs> it might look like I'm just doing random shit, and I am, but Melodyne is designed for something, and it's not really designed for this. That's why I love using it. I love using it in the wrong way, because I think that's where you come up with the most unique and, and inspiring and, and like unexpected sounds is by breaking things and then recording the output of that brokenness, right? So, okay, I just told Melodyne that this is a monophonic signal. I'm not really going to go into detail about what I'm doing down here because that's almost its own video, um, but I think you should realize that I'm not really being strategic. I'm just kind of clicking. Okay, this is, this is quickly getting to overcooked territory. But sometimes I find you're like maybe one one step away from something great. You might you might think, oh, this sounds like shit. And then you like turn one knob and all of a sudden it's got this one cool little spot in it. And that's enough for you to throw in a song and it'd be a cool moment in that song. And sometimes you got to go through the valley of death to get there. But I feel like we might have reached the peak of what this sound can be. Uh, at least, I mean, I could go, I could keep going. I'm going to just try one more thing. I want to try one more thing. That's like pretty sick. That's kind of cool. Let's keep going. Let's try a different tempo. That's kind of a cool thing. You could maybe make like a, you could start a phrase with that. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna render that out. Let's uh, let's go. Drop scream. What tempo are we at? 112. I'm not gonna worry about the key right now. I'm just gonna put 112. Let's move on to the second sound that we've chosen for today. It's this one. Pretty much everywhere. It's gonna be hot. Got it? Then I don't need a jacket. <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. Thanks, Arthur. Thanks for this audio, which we will use to make a bass. I guess. Uh, now again, let's just start off by pitching it down, maybe. I like the laugh. Let's let's work with the laugh. Now I find the mono and the speech algorithms, they're the, the most character. They're probably, you know, they, they sound the worst, but in the best way. All right, let's, uh, let's... OTT. Let's OTT. Let's try automating the volume, and we'll just, uh, we'll just chuck in some... Turn up the tempo. Okay, just arbitrarily click some stuff in. Let's try, let's do 125 as a tempo. And we'll just shift things around to make them line up a bit better. Okay, let's work with this. Let's put it in Melodyne. Now we have the notes, so this is interesting. Again, I'm just kind of messing around with stuff. The important thing is not exactly what I'm doing here, it's the idea that I'm just experimenting, I'm just messing around. 
Okay, now let's send that to some distortion and see what happens. So we're gonna send it to Isotope Trash. I feel like that first part's gonna be a little harsh no matter what we do. I mean like the first part's kind of shitty, but this, this, that's pretty cool. I might just work with that. Let's just work with that. Like who cares about the first part? Let's do this one. All right, let's try going through, I don't know, vocal synth. I mean, this is kind of sounding a little bit vocally, so. Okay, this is pretty cool, actually. Let's let's try recording it where it's at, and we'll save it just so that we have it. All right, let's turn off Melodyne. Let's send this right back through it again. Sounds like crap. All right, I think that this is a good place to leave this sound. I guess my idea wasn't to show you how to make these specific sounds. It was more to just encourage you to go outside of the box when you're trying to create sounds you've never heard before, something unique, something interesting. Um, not everything has to come from a synth. Not everything has to come from serum or phase plant. And although those synths are great synths and I use them all the time, there are other ways to make cool sounds. If you like this video, let me know below. You know, hit the like button, uh, maybe leave a comment telling me which part you found the most informative or the most entertaining, because uh, I use those comments to, to help shape the kind of content that I create moving forward. And speaking of that, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Peace.